Good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Mr. Montes, Ernesto Montes, and I am one of the art teachers here at the Zoner Architecture Senior High School. Today, we'll be discussing one of the drawing exams you will be taking with your audition at our school. More specifically, I will be talking about the portrait portion of your exam. In this particular case, one of the ways we're going to do this is we're going to give you a mirror, you're going to sit in front of a piece of large paper and using a 6b pencil you are going to make a drawing of yourself okay today what i'll do is that i'll discuss some of the things you're going to hear during the instructions i'm going to talk about the rubric that we will be using to evaluate your work give you some strategies and maybe things that you need to think about or you can practice at home and of course show you some examples of student work highlighting some of the successes uh, that we've seen and some of the things that we feel students can definitely be better at or even practice, which is the point of this uh, video that I'm making. Let's start with one of the th first things you're going to hear when you come in. So these are some of the instructions that you're going to hear when you first walk into the classroom to take your drawing exam. The first thing is sit in front of a mirror uh, in front of your drawing paper so you can see yourself and see your drawing paper. Try not to move your head only move your eyes from the mirror to the paper. Practice this for a minute to see if you can keep the same pose. So let's take just that basic idea real quick and have a little mirror. In your case, you're gonna have a drawing board maybe right here that you're gonna be able to draw from. Although again, I will be using this just to illustrate um, what some strategies. Now, the first thing as you heard is hey, position yourself against your mirror. Feel comfortable, make sure that what you see is what you want to draw, okay? Secondly, I want you to position yourself in such a way where you can see yourself in the mirror and see your drawing with minimal movement. If you start moving too much, okay, you're not gonna be able to consistently get the pose back and B, you may miss information as you look at something and then you try to translate that into your drawing, okay? Now, second thing you're gonna, uh, the is observation is very, very important. Part of this exam is how well can you capture what you see? How well trained are you in seeing proportions, seeing details, seeing texture, okay? And overall, just the ability to mimic what you see in front of you, okay? Draw large enough to fill the page. If you look at this drawing right behind me, and I'll talk about this in a minute, notice how large you're drawing. We're not looking for itty bitty, drawings we're looking for you to use as much of this paper as you possibly can when you draw okay during this drawing you will have approximately 40 minutes so we're not expecting you to develop a fully blown hyper realistic drawing but just enough time for you guys to develop a drawing okay that again fulfills some of the rubric or some of the things that we'll be looking for for instance number one we're going to be looking for line quality thick thin light dark the fluidity of your line how are you making marks okay second observation of values anywhere you're set okay you're going to find that light will create shadows or create areas that are lighter areas that are darker your ability to be able to capture some of those basic sort of nuances of light and dark are important to us for they give the face that much more illusion or, or you know volume right when we make a drawing um observation of textures how are you describing let's say a beard versus skin versus glasses versus a hat each of which reflect light differently and therefore should be addressed through a slightly different mark as you're trying to describe these particular textures okay proportion are your eyes in relationship to your nose, to your mouth, accurate to these universal proportions of the human form, right? And I'll go over some of the strategies there. So, you know, are you placing all these features that, you know, compose the, the face in where they need to be? And ultimately, composition. How are you using all this white space? Are you just drawing little bits? Are you leaving too much in the background? Are you adding too much or too little to the background? Or you just have a floating head? Do you have neck, shoulders? And again, you're engaging as much of the paper as possible. Those are some of the things we will be looking for. So let's start with some basic strategies. The basic strategies, like I said before, is yes, to position yourself, you know, well in relationship to your mirror so you can see. But more importantly, when you do begin, and I will be just using charcoal for the sake of uh, having the line seen a little better, but start loosely. When you start lightly, 
you're gonna get more fluidity out of it. You're gonna be able to make adjustments and you're gonna be able to, to already find scale and placement of where you're gonna put your face in relation to, to the paper. Where are the shoulders gonna line up, okay? What angle are you seeing yourself in that mirror, okay? And as you're doing so, set up some basic structural lines to help you figure out what all the parts of the face might be, okay? Note that always from the top of your head to your chin, the middle is where your eyes are gonna fall, okay? Halfway between that, you're gonna find the bottom of the nose. Halfway between that, you're gonna find the mouth. So even just setting that up from the get-go in a very light, fluid line are gonna give you, are gonna prepare you to make decisions as you really start detailing your drawing, okay? Now, as you draw, again, start with the simple sort of areas that define those features, right? So we have the eyes, we have our nose, we have uh, the mouth over here. And while I'm just drawing very simply, that's already giving me a basic indication, overall indication, or how everything is gonna be seen, where everything is at. So I can gauge whether oh, I'm putting that too high or too low. Again, back to that rubric of proportion, okay? But starting lightly is key. Don't forget, also maybe you might wanna think about the background. What's in the background? And here I have a chair, I have some shelves in the back. And even little things like that are gonna help you set up the composition of your drawing. Now, for the sake of time, let's go over some things that we've seen, students, that are very good and some things that are not very good. For instance, I was just talking about proportion. Notice how much, how high the drawing, the eyes uh, of this of this drawing are. I think the student, while they have some nice, sort of started shading going on, some decent little marks over here, okay, then maybe the placement of the eyes a little bit too high. Also notice that there's a lack of engagement in the entire drawing. The student could have definitely worked a little bit more on the background, on refining um, the shoulders or adding the shoulders, and even maybe adding a few more details that would identify this as that particular kid. Remember, we don't want you to draw just a generic head. We want you to draw a head that looks like you, like the one that's making the drawing. Now, here's another one. Nice line, nice bold variation of lines. So you have some light lines, dark lines. You have some nice values maybe that are beginning here. But overall, the drawing feels very stylized, number one. Like they're not really looking at themselves in the mirror. They're just kind of drawing an idea or something they've learned about what eyes or nose or, uh, or hair may look like. B, well, the drawing could be really nice here. No real sort of development in the composition. Very little composition and too much negative space. Now, let's compare that to something like this, right? First of all, what's nice about this drawing, very fluid, very quick, very loose, which again, helped to sort of set up scale, set up proportion, and allowed you to make adjustments as you go. The chances are that the first line you're gonna make, the second and the third, may not be the lines that you're gonna eventually commit to, and that's gonna take some time. Hence why we want you to start loosely. Beautiful sort of mark making over here, very loose, very fluid marks. And again, notice the scale, notice how much they're uh, utilizing the entire page. And little things like this, look at how well, one of the hardest parts to draw is the nose, how well, uh, they've been able to describe that nose, the eyes, again, uh, as well, without overstating it, without overdrawing, or for that matter, underdrawing, okay? Beautiful drawing over here as well, especially in the way they did the hair, beautiful mark making, beautiful gesture. But again, if you look closely, you see how much all of these marks have built up over time. Not a lot of engagement in the factor, but there's still enough here that we can really see all sorts of different abilities from seeing Details as they describe the eye, to seeing some gesture as they describe those textures. And again, proportion shows in this drawing really, really, really well, right? Back to this side, we can also see something like this. Wow, okay. The student did not spend much time drawing, okay? Eyes are out of proportion. And again, seemingly like they're just drawing a generic face, not really looking at themselves, okay? So let's look at one more or a couple more, okay? Now notice too how every drawing is different. Some drawings are gonna be, you know, uh, with different compositions, different angles. This person drew themselves back a little bit. Yet notice how, again, some of those things that we're looking for are evident in, in this drawing 
and not as evident in some of these drawings, okay? More specifically, again, focusing on line quality, focusing on observation, focusing on textures, focusing on proportion, and ultimately focusing on composition, okay? These are some of the very basic things and rubrics we will be looking for when we grade your work, all right? Hopefully everything I've discussed today has been helpful for you and we wish you all the best of luck in your auditions. Take the next few months that you have left to practice. That way when you do come in, you're ready and you are do the best job you possibly can during your audition, okay? Thank you very much. And again, have a wonderful, wonderful audition.